Hi Year 4, good morning and welcome to your English lesson. Now today we are going to be focusing our English and our topic all on the subject of children having to work in the mines during the Victorian times. It's really quite hard for us to imagine them having to endure, the, endure those horrendous working conditions at such a young age. So today's English lesson this morning. So first of all, you're going to focus on looking at two pictures of the conditions in the mines in the Victorian times. And your learning objective today is to start sentences in a variety of ways. So the first thing that you're going to do after you've watched this video is that you're going to click on the PowerPoint called Alan Pete Sentences. Now, Alan Pete has created a list of sentences and they are to help your writing be far richer. And they're there to guide you to try and think of different ways of starting your sentences to avoid what teachers don't particularly like, which is starting everything with once upon a time or once there was a small boy or once there was a young girl. So I just want to talk you through some of those sentences. Some of them you already know and some will be new to you. So once you click on the Google Slides document, Alan Pete sentences, the first um, type of sentence that we're going to look at is one that you all know. It's called a two a D sentence. So a two A D sentence has two adjectives separated by a comma before a noun. So for instance, in this sentence, we have got, he was a tall, awkward man. Well, the two adjectives are tall and awkward, and they are separated by a comma, and they are before the noun man. But what you might want to do now is to extend this by um, ensuring that you actually now have two more adjectives separated by a comma before another noun. So here, it's, it is, he was a tall, awkward man, that's one 2AD sentence, with an old, crumpled jacket. Well, old and crumpled are your adjectives, and jacket is your noun, so that's another 2AD sentence. And here's another example. It was an overgrown, messy garden, that's your one 2AD sentence, overgrown and messy being your adjectives before the noun garden. And then with a lifeless, leafless tree, that's another 2AD sentence, two adjectives, lifeless and leafless before your noun tree. So try when you look at the pictures in a second to think about how you can use a 2AD sentence. I know you're all really good at using those, but try perhaps to extend it by combining 2AD sentences together. The second type of sentence, which is a new type of sentence that we haven't looked at before, is called a three, oops, sorry, a three ED sentence. You might be thinking, oh, what does that mean? But basically it means when you have one, two, three adjectives, but they have to be three adjectives that are similar. They must be related to each other and they must all end in ED, which gives us the three ED, three adjectives ending in ED, separated by commas, but they must be related to each other, okay? And they are normally used to describe a characters or your emotions. So it says here, frightened, terrified, exhausted, they ran from the menacing creature. We've got another three ED sentence, amused, amazed, excited, he left the circus reluctantly. That means that he didn't want to leave. Okay, then we've got another one where we've got three ED adjectives. Confused, troubled, worried. She didn't know what had happened. So that would be a really quite easy one, I think, to do to describe um, the pictures that you're about to see um, because you'd be able to describe how you think the miners might have been feeling working in those conditions. The next one I want to remind you of is an emotion word and then a comma sentence. And we've done this before. If you remember in class, we used to say emotion, <gasps> comma, sentence. And an emotion, comma, sentence always begins with an adjective. And then it is um, followed by a comma. So, for example, desperate, comma, she screamed for help. Terrified, comma, he froze instantly. Anxious, comma, they began to realise that they were lost in the forest. You might want to try that one. And then the last two are ones that you know. One is a simile using like or as a to describe and compare. And then personification, where you guess give something that isn't human a human quality. So, for instance, the rain wept. 
Okay, here's your personification, down the wind. 